And we are back. And we just finished watching 2022's The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, rated R, with a runtime of one hour and 47 minutes. I'm going to call it, this is my favorite film of 2022. This That's was it. All, this was fun. That's it. Everybody else can go home. <laughs> this is absolutely, God, what fun. It was, it had heartfelt moments. It had action. It had comedy. Yeah, it was goofy. It was surreal. It was. It was. It, it was. It like addressed all the things about Nick Cage that you <laughs> you you wondered about. Like like is is there this cocaine fueled <laughs> maniac Nick Cage inside the head of a normal Nick Cage? Nick Cage? Yeah, well, and why? the answer is yes. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> uh, it's like how come he makes such good movies? He also makes stuff like jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, adaptation. It's it's funny that the guy that made adaptation made jujitsu. Yes, it just it doesn't seem like funny. it should be. Yes, <laughs> it just doesn't say sound feel like it should be in the same sentence. Although he did P Pig recently too, which was Pig was brilliant, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. He was robbed. He should have been nominated for an Oscar at least. This was directed by Tom Gormican with writing credits to Tom Gormican and Kevin Et Etten. I want to see more from these two guys, these two writers. Yeah, this, this was this so was good. damn good. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm going to go around the table and get impressions. What do you think? I thought this was great. Uh, I'm. You can definitely veer into some bad areas when you're doing a film like this, but they played it up just right. Yes. They played it up. Clearly, this is you know, Nick Cage playing himself. It's, it's a fictionalized version of Nick, Nick Cage. Nick Cage, right. Uh, I think I even read that he changed the spelling, so it's it's not N I C, it's N I C K hey, or something yeah, and, yeah. and whatnot. But it, it's like close enough to your idea of what's going on. Sure. And then there's like, like I said, there's the whole thing where he's like seeing himself, and it's the per the one that he's seeing is like the guy that you saw in that crazy interview for Wild at Heart, where he's in the leather jacket with the crazy hair, and he's doing karate kicks. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that guy oh my god and uh i mean pedro pascal was just amazing so good good so, so good. good you're like worried that he's gonna be like some douchey rich guy who's buying nick cage for a party but he is just the sweetest, sweetest man guy. on earth and nick was right to trust his and actors his, his, his shamanic <laughs> thespian <laughs> instincts <laughs> I love that the shamanic. He's, he's doing magic. So oh, good. So good. So good. Everybody. Nobody's wasted here. Even like the minor characters. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ike Barinholtz as one of the FBI guys and Tiffany Haddish as the other uh, CIA, sorry, CIA yeah, operative. CIA operatives. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. So good. <laughs> so good. My only if I was giving notes this is I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right now. This isn't a near perfect movie, and I and shout out to the writers and directors because they gave a shout out to Paddington too, which is a perfect oh, film. Yes. film. I mean, that's another thing. How can you not like a movie that you pays know, homage pays to pays homage to the Paddington two. greatness that is Paddington two, <laughs> not just once but twice. Twice, yes, yes, yes. yeah. This was just. A ton of fun. A ton of fun. Nick Cage is the goat. I like this new renaissance that he has going on. Pig was amazing. This was fantastic. Yeah. Completely. I mean, from where it starts to where it ends up, just goddamn fun. This is like, to me, this is like the definition of a summer film. Like a fun summer film to go see at the theater. Yeah. Yeah. We did not go to the theater. We rented it, but still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go to you, Gigi. What'd you think of the film? I liked it. Yeah, I probably didn't like it as much as you guys. You probably guys not. Really, really liked this film, but I still thought it was good. Yeah. Did you have a favorite character? It would be Javi. Who? Javi. Javi. Wasn't he great? He was so great. I loved him. Yeah, he was really good. Pedro is usually great. Did you have a favorite scene? I liked when they were talking about Patty. Yes, yes. And it was so funny because Javi got Nick to sit and watch it with him. And then yeah. at the, the like first Nick, time, Nick is like crying. He, he's, like, he's like, what's your, what's your third? You, you got to tell me, what's your third favorite movie? Oh, yeah. And he's just like patting the two. And he's just like, what? what? No way. 
And he's like, have you ever seen it? He's like, no. And the next thing they're watching it. And, and Nicolas Cage is crying, <laughs> as he should. I cannot watch that film without crying at the end when he says, happy birthday, Aunt Lucy. I can't. I, yeah. It's not humanly possible for me. What about you, Olive G? What did you think of this film? I thought it was good. Yeah? Did you like Nick Cage as a character? Yes. Even in the beginning when he was sort of kind of a jerky dad? Ugh. Yeah, we could live without that. But he, he learned a lesson, right? He he became he's starting to become a better dad to Addie, mm-hmm. played by Lily Moshin, who looks exactly like her mother, Kate Beckinsdale. Oh really? I didn't yeah. know. You mentioned that they were related. Yeah, that's her daughter and uh Wesley Snipes. I find her, her middle and last name combined is it's is crazy. So Moshin. It's yeah. like it's like a, a southern guy talking about a piece of equipment. Either that or like serial killers, because don't they usually go by three names? Well, I'm just going by, what's that Mo Shane over there? <laughs> <laughs> you made it funny. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> that is crazy when you say it like that. It's a Lily Mo Shane. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, did you have a favorite scene, Olive G? No. No. Okay, fair enough, fair Not enough. Not really. Not really. But you, en- you enjoyed the, the whole thing, though, right? Uh-huh. Okay. I-, I thought it was funny how, like, there... He- they're like crying over how like he couldn't get over the brick wall. <laughs> that was hilarious. I was gonna say that was one of my favorites when they're tripping on it. <laughs> yeah. Like, where is this like they're going? Looking, they're looking at us. <laughs> and like right after they're like, what if we what if we put paranoia in the movie? Wait a minute. Are those guys looking at us? Oh my god, I think they are. Yeah, I mean this film just like it it runs the range. I mean, you you have conversation about the secret cabinet of dr caligari which i hate yeah. with a passion You've mentioned that many times oh my gosh i had to watch that in film school and i hated it hated it hated it hated it, and still hate it and never want to see it again and the mere mention of the film well nick cage and, and javi both loved the, the was, that was their second was favorite their second right favorite yeah oh god it's such a stupid film I've never seen it, so I can't judge. Never film heard of college film teachers teach Jaws. Don't teach the secret cabinet of Dr. Caligari. It's a piece of crap film. Anything else? Does anybody want to add it? I mean, there's really nothing to critique here. This was like yeah, the definition I mean, of a I fun. And plus, I don't want to give many details away. This is a this is a new film. Yes. Yes. Uh, it it's one that you should see yes it's really good if you want to be entertained it's a good film in that it takes you for a ride because it starts out going one direction it takes you a bit of a curve in another direction then another curve gets added and then it just it snowballs to this crazy to what there and the thing that's funny is that it mirrors the screenplay that is described in the movie yes yes so it's like well, well, we're gonna put that in there oh yeah. we gotta get that hook and yeah. when he was discussing it with tiffany haddish it's like yeah she's got a point <laughs> you want to make this epic you want to make this you heartfelt get those... head scratcher of a movie right, right. and but nobody's gonna want to see that everybody wants to see marvel and star wars right and, you right know, so you gotta you, get butts you gotta, and seats. you gotta have a hook to just get him in there so so they could be blown away by yeah. the the emotional impact of what you're trying to, to, to tell them. Yeah. Oh, so good from start to finish. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're brave enough to go to the theaters, check out this new little gem from our very own and favorite Nicolas Cage, the unbearable weight of massive talent. He really has an amazing biography, a filmography. St- I mean, it's funny. There was a bit, of time there where it was just like oh he's done yeah. he's just making crap after crap just just straight to video or straight to kind streaming of stuff, yeah. weird Jiu-Jitsu. movies that are just terrible like yeah Jiu-Jitsu. like jujitsu but even though that was later yeah. like he was already starting to make good you know, movies again good stuff but like he peppers it all in where it's just don't seriously don't judge anything or don't prejudge anything because yeah. this guy he's yeah He's made some duds. Duds, absolutely. <laughs> but he he keeps but he'll, it interesting. He'll he'll churn out some real gems, and this is definitely a gem. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, we should do like the summer of Nick Cage, maybe yeah. next summer. I mean, 
Yeah. I mean, he is like that's the other He's thing done about so him. so much. We could probably just fill a month of Nick Cage. I mean, we could probably do the whole year. According to IMDb, he's starred in 109 films. There's only 52 weeks in the year. Yeah. So, Maybe. I mean, we could we can do his hits and we could do some of the stinkers too. Season of the Witch, that's a terrible movie. The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah. But Kick-Ass was good. Kick Big Ass Daddy. Was good. He was Big Daddy. Yeah. Apparently he was a voice in Astro Boy. I don't remember that. I vaguely recall that. Yeah. And Raising Arizona, which we, which Raising we already Arizona. covered. And but. this movie also kind of gives a nod to some of his stuff. Gone in 60 Seconds. Oh, yeah. Probably um, wouldn't have been one of the ones that I would have picked. Guarding Test. Guarding Test was another one. I was like, which one was that? Was that the one with Shirley MacLaine or Olympia Dukakis? Yeah. I, I vaguely remember that movie. But um, what about Con Air? On air, like the, the whole sequence in the beginning where the girl was watching, and it. I loved Javi's little shrine to his Nick, little shrine, his yeah. little lair to that Nick weird that had wax dummy. <laughs> like, how like, much did that cost? Six thousand. He's like, I'll, I'll, I'll give pay you twenty thousand for. <laughs> that was ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah, we really should do the summer of of Nick Cage mm -hmm. at some point. I think. I mean, I'm I mean, looking there's, at there's his... so many that we haven't God seen. Damn it, that we, seriously. We, like, what is it? Wally's Wonderland. We had that on our queue. For we a while. have that on our queue. Well, I I forgot. He's in Fast Times at Richmond High. He's one of Brad's friends. Yeah, he's with a, and my with favorite his Valley full Girl. Head of hair. Valley Girl. He still has his hair. Then he was in Rumblefish, Racing with the Moon, Cotton Club, Birdie. I love Birdie with Matthew Modine. I've never seen it. Oh, that's such a good movie. Peggy Sue got the Boy in Blue. Peggy Sue got married. Raising Arizona. Moonstruck. I can't believe you've never seen Moonstruck. Not the whole way through. I'm just not a Cher fan. Vampire's Kiss, which is crazy. Wild Never at on Heart. Tuesday, Time to Kill, Wild at Heart, Free Firebirds, something called Industrial Symphony Number no. 1, The Dream of the Brokenhearted, Zandali, Honeymoon in Vegas, Amos and Andrew, Red Rock West, which I like, Deadfall, Guarding Test, It Could Happen to You, Trapped in Paradise, Kiss of Death, Leaving Las Vegas. That's the one he won the Oscar for. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Show, The Rock, Con Air, Face Off. Wow, he did those three back to back. Those did well at the box yeah, office, he so he got paid. Out some action movies there. City of Angels, where he kind of became like the romantic lead in that. Yeah. That was the one where he's the angel. Yeah, yeah, with that stupid song. Listen, you can say what you want about the Goo Goo Dolls, but that <laughs> that song paid for like three people's college tuition. Yeah, probably. It's probably still. That was is. such a huge monster hit. I don't even remember any other music those those clowns made other than that song. Snake Eyes, Eight Millimeter, Bringing Out the Dead. We have to watch. Gone in sixty seconds. The Family Man. That's the one I liked. Oh, they talked about Captain Corelli's mandolin, which he said was underrated. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Carol, the movie, Wind Talkers, Sunny Adaptation, which is lovely. That's another movie that I can't watch without crying. Adaptation's really good. Mad uh, Matchstick Men, National Treasure, Lord of War, The Weatherman, The Ant Bully, World Trade Center, Wicker Man, Ghost Rider. We should do oh, Ghost Rider. Oh, God. Shame that was shite. Shame inducing and in, in how bad it was. Yeah. All right. I, we don't need to go over his whole filmography. We don't, but there's a lot of interesting stuff. He is, he is an interesting actor. Yeah. I mean, even when he does crap like Ghost Rider, you still want to root for him. Yeah. And you still like him. Mm -hmm. God damn it. All right. Olive G, one to ten. Eight. Eight. GG. I'd say eight, too. I'd give this, uh, I'd give this an eight and a half. I, I originally I like was going to say an eight and a half, but I'm going to give this sucker a nine. This Ooh. was a ton of fun. A, a near flawless movie. Not I, flawless like Paddington 2, yeah. but almost there. But still, I, I worth noticed, the watch. I noticed there were certain bits towards the end of the movie where I feel like some actors were not actually present in the scenes that they were supposed to be there. What do you mean? Ike Barinholtz, I don't believe he was in that room at the end. Oh, when he slumped. Oh, I, I couldn't tell. I don't think that... I think that maybe, like... Maybe there was like COVID stuff going on where they could only uh, have like one person in a room or something. Because even the way that that scene was filmed, there was very little interaction between people. Then there was another scene when they were all in the car together, and uh, Nick asks his daughter how the other girl is doing, and the other girl's supposedly sitting right behind Nick Cage, and the daughter's like, "Oh, she's fine." 
And then the, anytime you see the other girl, she's by herself. Interesting. So I think there was like some creative editing going on. Interesting. And yeah, that was that was that that was a little odd to me. You know what? We should at some point we have to watch this movie again. We should go through all the movies that they mention because they also mentioned Mandy. Yes. Which was the chainsaw from Mandy. The chainsaw from Mandy. <laughs> Jesus. And we should do those films. Yeah. Well, we reviewed Mandy, didn't we? No. Oh, we didn't review Mandy? We watched it. We watched it. We yeah. I think we did it for our anniversary. Oh, uh, okay. We watched it, but we never... Th- and that came out before we started the podcast. Uh, all right. 2018. Yeah. All right. Into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man oh, yeah. Noir. Spider-Man Noir. What does he oh, say, so Olive? Good. I said an eight. No, what does is, what is, what is, uh, Spider-Man Noir say to that guy when he's beating him up? Calls him a turtle slapper or something? Yes. Yes. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. He he calls him a turtle slapper. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, and he's got a couple other films coming out this year. He's got he's got two other films coming out this year, The Old Way and The Retirement Plan. And then next year, Butcher's Crossing and Renfield. He's Dracula? Oh yeah, I heard about Renfield. Yeah. It's a He's movie. Dracula. He's Dracula. Oh, who's Renfield? Is it it's not Daniel Radcliffe, is it? God, I love Daniel Radcliffe. You know what? That's on his IMDb page. I thought that was John Travolta. <laughs> right? Come on. That they, doesn't look like Nick Cage. They starred in Face, face Off together. Maybe they were uh, similar enough to have Apparently, warn each other's... Apparently, Sonic is in face. this as Teddy Lobo. Chris McKay is directing. Avasarala, isn't it? She plays Ella. Who's Renfield? X Men. Oh, name? Nicholas Holt. Nicholas Holt. Yeah, Aquafina's in it. I knew it was some English dude. <laughs> God damn it! He is a national treasure. That Nicholas Cage. He started National Treasure. He too, did, which but was he is. As well. He is a national treasure. God love him. Go see this if yes. you're if you're brave enough to go to the theaters. Go check this movie out, and if you aren't brave enough to go to the theaters like us, go rent it. It's currently on Prime. Check it out. You won't regret it. This is a fun, fun summer flick. Actually, this, you can watch this whenever, but this was a ton of fun. I really enjoyed this. He said he's a national treasure. I'm like, this, the sequel to this should be like, he dies and like his skin has like a treasure map to his fabled comic book collection. <laughs> and like, you know, his clone has to get it. That would that. be interesting if they did a sequel to this, right? I don't think they can. I think they could. All right, let's. let's All right, we're going to wrap it up. So, yes, at the end of the day, go check out The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, starring the always lovely and talented and fun Nicolas Cage from 2022. I'm I'm calling it best movie of the year so far. It's good. It's really good. Tell me something that's better. I can't think of something anything off the top of my head, but it's good. It's really good. Go check it out. And that's it from us. And before we wrap up tonight, we are going to dedicate this movie review to the lovely Cleo, to the lovely Reese, and to the lovely Stephanie. I think another great thing about this film was the power of friendship between Javi and Nicolas Cage. So I want to thank my sister wife, Stephanie, for being such an amazing, wonderful woman and presence in my life and bringing amazing children into the world I am completely in love with those kids and sad that her son will not marry my daughter but that's okay <laughs> well the next meeting is like July 13th oh does it? okay well, that's a I'll, I'll cut this don't worry <laughs> <laughs> I lost my train of thought so again from all of us to all of you hang on to your really great buds they really make the world so much better. So again, thank you to Cleo. Thank you to Reese. I love you, Stephanie. And that's it from us. And we will bid you all. Good night. A- Good night. Good night. Night. <laughs> I said it before you. You did.